Good morning. This is uh, the continuation of my read of my a daily devotional book for your enjoyment and holy Bible study pleasure. So uh, I'm recording three at a time until we catch up. We should catch up around the 28th. So day four. The scriptural references are, oh, actually on this one I did a study challenge. Okay, so use family fellowship time to search in Gateway Bible or Bible Online to find the word that will sure up you and your faith in pursuit of our Lord Christ Jesus Almighty. Use the terms preeminence, heir of salvation, Firstborn, yoke, burden, light, etc. And in this one, my um, suggestion for worship and praise is Never Could Have Made It by Sap. Not the football player, the other guy. Okay. I'm really bad with names, so don't take it personal. Okay, so the entry is... Christ Jesus is not to be our side action. So often we accept Christ Jesus as our Savior, but we unequivocal and brazenly refuse to follow him as our Lord. We know, and I would venture to say, that we even have a measure of faith concerning the matter that what Saul Paul says is true. To live is Christ and to die is Cain. We even agree with Jesus' judgment of how difficult it is for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. As our earthen vessels cry out for controls and treasures of this world and thereby grip our hearts to the quick. How do we escape this damning dilemma? We yoke our very being to Christ Jesus. We apply John 15 all, all verses, the vine and branches chapter. As we feed on Jesus as our living word, living water, bread, and breath of life. Our spirit man grows up, matures, and strengthens our resolve for our dedication to the cause of Jesus Christ. Then our desire is synchronized with his, and the more diligently we pursue him with vigilance, cares of this world slough off like the dead skin of a snake, empty and discarded in dry lands, fittingly. If you've accepted Christ Jesus as your Savior, but have yet to yield to him as your Lord and King, take this moment to make sure you are yoked up to him as your Lord. Put Jesus first in your life. Pin the cause of Christ Jesus first and foremost in your life without wavering. On a religious level, you may already see, quote unquote, Christ Almighty as one seventh of your time, and one-tenth of your money. Well, here's a heralding for you. It's not our clock, and it's not our money. Consider breathing. Consider the heartbeat. Consider the creator of everything. We cannot lose when we agree with the mind of Christ Jesus, that he is and is to have the preeminence in all things. Then will he real and ungoingly reveal himself to us, that we may truly see. And our intercession for this one, this entry, day four, is Lord God Almighty, Alpha and Omega. Make me a good steward of your bounty, Lord Jesus Christ. Please, God, our deacons, deaconesses, ushers, and the like, who help manage the concerns of the congregation. I also pray, child love, for all Americans May we experience a miracle vehicle in our in or car design. Amen. Day five. Scriptural reference or study guide for day five. Genesis chapter fifty verses fifteen through twenty one. Now it's in this order as well. Chapter forty two verses twenty to twenty three. And then chapter 32, all the verses. So I'm suggesting that you read it in that order. 
and you'll sense the reason why when you do that. And then also Jacob's guilt weighed heavy on him for much of his life and he in turn was grossly swindled by Rachel's father. My um, suggestion for praise and worship on day five is Take Me to the King as presented by Tamala Mann. Okay, so the entry for day five. The cost of evil doing is persisted in guilt. Those of us who have learned to lean completely on Jesus Christ have all been there. We recognize how utterly wretched we are and we cry out to him in prayer, in praise, in perplexity. We know the whens and the whys. It's the how that undoes us. Inevitably, when we consider to partake in sin, we never think the consequences will be all that heavy that we cannot stand to bear. After all, we have the great shepherd and bishop of our souls making intercession for us day and night. True that, but obedience is better than sacrifice. And the payment for wicked pursuits, known and unknown, tears us to the core. A sports station used to show a keen and relevant ad tag, the agony of defeat. But praise be to God Almighty, though we feel torn apart, truly we have the victory in him who himself tore himself apart for our sakes and revealed victory with the renting of the veil. And now, and now, through our sin, though our sins be scarlet, and a crimson tide rolls in to wash us ashore or otherwise wipe us out, we have the privilege to boldly approach his throne of grace and cry out, Abba, Father, my Lord and my God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Because of the cross of Christ Jesus, we can bow down inside the Holy of Holies and receive the healing we need from our sin and our sins. In the intercession for day five, pray that the Holy Ghost will impact us to faithfully obey God Almighty's goodness. Today, sweet Jesus, we ask that you cover with your anointing all lay ministers, their loved ones, neighbors, and friends. We also pray, dear Jehovah Rapha, for the Andorans. May they experience a tree or tree-related discovery useful at home and abroad. Amen. I'm using the version today that has the expanded intercessory prayers. Whereby once you finish the book, you will have prayed for every person, well, every nation, every people, um, every populated and unpopulated land mass on the planet. Day six. Okay, scriptural references for study on day six are Genesis 39, chapter 39, verses 1 through 20. And I have subtitled that Integrity's Price. And then Genesis 41, chapter 41, verses 13 through 44. And I have subtitled that Integrity's Payoff. And then also 1 Peter, chapter 4, verse 13. And Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. And the praise song that I suggest is What Joy, as presented by Sarah Emerson. Again, these songs you can find on YouTube. Day 6. The cost of integrity yields the payoff of integrity. As Joseph chose to do that which is 100% honorable, he did suffer long and greatly for it. This suffering, being for righteousness' sake, would have had a brighter scene, but one just as painful as the internal turmoil we experience due to the earth matters and our fallen nature. I'm sure that Joseph possessed enough political savvy and connections to make Potiphar's wife miserable and to even get the Pharaoh to believe him over her, but he chose not to do so. Why? Because it would have required him to do as the wicked. Instead, he chose to trust completely in Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, our mighty God, to handle situ the situation as he saw fit. Not only that, but it's obvious that Joseph wasted little to no time with pity parties over his circumstances 
but instead did all in his power to glorify God Almighty, even while unjustly incarcerated. Now, how about you and I? How long does it take us to forgive? Or rather, how about you and me? How long does it take us to forgive? How long does it take us to full and truly turn matters over to our Heavenly Father? Let us return to the days of praying through. Keep fervently praying about a matter until you sense release of grip on that part of your heart wrenched by that matter. Rejoice always has got to be the most difficult command, but command it is. And for intercession on this day, <clears throat> day six, let us pray that people, communities will be valued above money and commerce. In Christ Jesus' holy and precious name, we do pray. We pray, dear Father God Almighty, which art in heaven, please bless our police squads and our children throughout the land, for, the, for these are perilous times for the human being. We also pray, dear Jehovah Jireh, for the Angolans. May everyone there have blanket abundance during any cold time. Amen. Have an excellent Tuesday. This is Tuesday, January 22nd, and the year is 2019.